my background is as a musician who works in a studio or at a live performance uh, with uh, my own gadgets which I find it very easy to uh, deal with. Um, today we have a very very um, um, fantastic topic catch the next wave. Um, small example for that. This is how I would perceive a wave. It is my mathematical combinations with uh, my musicality or my percussion or any other musician will do such a thing with his melody, his progressions with melody. He would perceive wave as notes. But how about from a sound engineer's point of view? How does he see a wave? How does he hear a wave? He would see his wave in some recording medium say maybe a digital audio workstation having n number of tracks or some other small mp3 player where he can just connect to the computer and grab audio and he can edit and he can do all such things but how did this recording stuff or how did this uh, uh, record of a human voice started it all started with a small uh, hierarchy i have here it started with a small speck of electrical impulse which started from a point A to point B. Edison started with his telegraph and gramophone came in in 1988. Gramophone in that time was preliminary like very very premature. Lot of big, big cylinders of uh, brass and uh, copper were used to just record around 10 minutes or 5 minutes of the recording of music of, and then it will be played. Victoral came into existence in 19, uh, 1906, same adaptation of gramophones. But commercial radio came into existence in 1920 by RCA. They put in commercial radio where it was basically found out for uh, people in war so that they could hear some music or they could get some um, entertainment done when they are in, at distress. And Edwin Armstrong, who was a former uh, employee of RCA, uh, he found out FM radio. For that guy was given, not given that um, uh, credit at all, but he was the man who was um, uh, responsible to find out FM radio. V disc, the actual vinyl disc, came into existence in 1943. A rubber disc would play on some certain player at a certain RPM, say 75, 38, and so on. And people used to hear them keeping at their house as a hi-fi system there those days play the music and sound tape cartridge the cassettes came in 1958 same again rca but to say here all the cassettes were maybe mono or later stereo stereo means two channel or mono means one channel but they wanted to create something else they started with eight track uh, cassette players which were very bulky and it would it was not mobile Sony thought cassette should be something handy we should we should take a cassette player anywhere we should go so they started with Sony Walkmans but digitalization of music industry started with the compact disc it came in with Philips and Sony in 1982 from there on, all the digitalization of any recordings we take was done with DAT and MIDI. That was digital audio tape recorders. MIDI came into existence. MIDI is music instrument device interface. Any, any musician could just play in some key in some uh, trigger, some notes, and that would be um, um, like transmitted 
to a different machine where it produces a different sound. MIDI was invented. From there on, digital workstations came in, multi-track recording systems, 16 track, 24 track, 32 track. Nowadays, we have unlimited tracks, virtual tracks. You can um, I can just record some Rudangam today. My friend can come tomorrow, add some voice over it. And some other day, uh, another pianist can come and play some piano. But finally, a sound engineer can edit it in a different world. He can sit in USA, have this all this data, and he can edit it and send me a final wave. Those were digital workstations we have. And when it comes to Walkman, as Sony said, everything went into a small gadget called MP3 players. Now MP3 players are in. So this is a simple hierarchy where music technology has improved our um, perseverance towards music in music industry. There's a fantastic um, um, thing called VST. VST is virtual synth instruments. Virtual synth instruments are um, realistic instruments or some synth which has been laid out in a format so that people could use it on their computers just triggering those instruments through a MIDI um, uh, keyboard or any other such devices. VST also stands for some of the finest uh, effects like reverb or delay or any other such n number of effects. One such VST is autotune. How does autotune come into existence? Uh, in 70s, uh, if I'm right, guitarists wanted to have a lot of effects for their guitars. They, uh, they came up with effect pedals like the uh, reverb, chorus, delay and all those such things. They also came up with vocoders. Vocoders are small strong boxes wherein you can just plug in your uh, microphone and just hitting a button, it could produce different harmonies of your voice. So same technology was used in autotune. Andy Hilbert, uh, he was a man um, who was, um, uh, was commissioned by all these oil companies for determining seismic activity. He, he used to send sound waves to the core of the earth and get it back and using a mathematical formula called um, auto coloration, he used to determine which is the best site for drilling and getting oil and it would uh, save oil companies a lot of money. Because of this, he retired by 40. But Andy was a musician by himself. His passion was music. So he took up his next career as music. He started his own company called Antares. Antares started building a lot of VSTs for musicians. Antares also came up with autotune. How did this happen? He was just sitting with his, some of his friends. And while he was chatting, one of his friends said, hey, can you just um, do a storm box or a VST where people could sing in pitch, in right pitch. Whatever I can blabber, it should be in a right pitch. This was a great idea. And he was struck by this idea like, yes, I can do that. He tinkered auto coloration a little more into VSTs. And then he came up with this great idea called autotune. The flow chart is very simple. You have an audio source, you have an audio interface which uh, converts with your computer and ADDA converters. You have the microprocessor which uh, takes in that audio and processes it and gives back the audio as analog signals with a pitch perfect wave. This is a simple uh, uh, layout of auto tune which has been um, brought out by Antares. Well, it has a lot of these knobs. Uh, like um, pitch amount, pitch amplitude, all these things. Uh, this is very technical. Uh, I can explain it to you later. The simple thing is it has a, a variable from 0 to 400. What is this variable 0 to 400? It is milliseconds in which the autotune attacks a um, wave. Any wave or any uh, say a singer who sings into the comp, everything gets into autotune and this uh, assimilates those waves in frequency modes. Every note has its own frequency. So this autotune maps those frequency so that you could handle each frequency in its own right. So if you, if you are out of tune, say in C or C major, 
then you can just tweak, uh, uh, tweak those um, uh, milliseconds to get the perfect pitch out of the auto tune this has also other features like you can bypass certain notes um, to say um, a pentatonic scale like mohana i'm singing in mohana i don't want a pentatonic scale i have to get out and do it something else so i need to like take out a certain note you can just bypass a certain note so that it altogether a different raga this is how i can relate to it with autotune melodyne a different company a vst company came up with a next idea of autotune they gave in the pictorial representation of autotune and sound engineer it's it is not uh, necessary for him to just um, to be musical now he can see his wave he, now he can see the notes the keyboard is been placed in a in a side and the wave has all um, all the notes which is been like uh, e f sharp how the singer has sung everything is been laid out and if there is some problem with the frequency it shows if it is down it shows down it shows, if it is very up and it shows up so percentage of um, uh, the um, deflection in uh, notes were shown so that people could like correct it whenever there is it is necessary so what are the advantages of auto tune from a sound engineers or from music uh, industries point of view all songs sounded pitch perfect it is not necessary that balmurli sir or yashoda sir should you know, should sing and it should be pitch perfect no i can sing i can be pitch for per, pitch perfect because of auto tune not no it's not just um, vocalists who are going to be pitch perfect even the instrumentalists took advantage of auto tune any instrumentalist now for that matter if guitar is out of tune out of tune yes auto tune is there if flute is out of out of tune auto tune is there violin violin is a tough instrument because the fretboard you don't have the frets it's a flat piece so if you are out of tune with violin you can do it with auto tune and number of things lot of new ideas fx creation came out of auto tune like melodyne put uh, the wave into midi representation whatever wave you um, feed into melodyne it would give you a midi representation so that you could use those midi no notes to put into a different instrument totally if i can sing a melody the output may be a violin or guitar playing the same melody this gave birth to new ideas in creating melodies and effect voice processors came into existence with auto tune a lot of companies like uh, tascam tc electronics they produced uh, on board um, hardware system for a um, performer they can just grab in their gadget put it on a mic stand just plug in with their microphones and start singing and they will be pitch perfect these all came in with auto tunes with advantages there are also certain disadvantages with auto tune what are the disadvantages as i said all song were pitch perfect people couldn't like determine which is the right note and which is not who is a right singer and who is not who is a proper musician who is a mediocre people couldn't justify which is music and which is not lot of popular music lot of popular music like pop jazz uh, even bollywood auto tune was like um, um, it, it was everywhere in every song in every phrase in every track every track they were they were using auto tunes people were astonished by the kind of effects they would get but again a lot of um, uh, the celebrated um, uh, academies like uh, grammy or oscars or indian gima and billboard they opposed for auto tune because there was not a calibration where you could say yes this man is musical and this is not because pitch is one of the criteria where they could uh, judge a music a very sm small thing but again in reality shows 
uh, everywhere we see in Z T V or E T V, any channel you put, you have all these popular uh, music, all these kids singing all the popular music. If you if if they know if they the, they don't understand the lyrics, also they'll be just singing. And it's um, engineers' work to get all those things back to his studio, make them pitch perfect. And how would uh, people say, ah, this boy uh, is singing fantastic, this boy is fantastic, and everybody is singing perfect. How to judge? This is a major problem what autotune has. From a personal note, when I work with all these musicians from different genres of music, what we always strive is to be as human as possible. It is not, it is not the work of a sound engineer to make a musician pitch perfect or to make him musical. It is a musician's work to be musical. But when I work with a lot of these musicians, um, say uh, Hindustani music, um, it is a uh, recording is being done with a tabla, uh, a voice and a harmonium. They will record it as a concert. There are no, there is no a metronome where, where we can uh, take back to the studio and say, no, this phrase of the musician is bad. So we could record it again. No, we cannot do it again. So in those cases, we can just select the the part where the musician is out of pitch slightly, and we can give the auto tune, the cosmetic makeup for those. So auto tune in general has phenomenal. Um, uh, um, ideas to come up with for a sound engineer, phenomenal things. And um, I would uh, rather say um, people who are interested in uh, sound engineering and they should take up and they should explore auto tune to its max. And uh, I would just uh, end my talk here. Thanks a lot.